Bible tells us that a solar eclipse darkened the heavens as Christ died on the cross. That is the moment we experience it in front of this monumental altarpiece, painted by Lorenzo Lotto in Venice around 1528 to 29. Dark clouds gather on the deep blue sky, enveloping the three condemned. A flash of light, however, catches their bodies, while a gust of wind sends their loincloths aflutter. As Christ breathes his last, the thin beams of his halo spring from his head. The penitent thief, whom Jesus had promised would join him in heaven, looks and almost seems to walk towards him in the air, as if disregarding his bonds and the crushing blows he has suffered to his shins. On the other side, the impenitent thief squirms in pain, a look of existential horror upon his face as he stares into the dark. We follow Jesus' ebbing gaze down the lands held by the Roman soldier Longinus. He's just pierced Christ's side to assess whether he's still alive, and the Savior's blood has run down the shaft to tint his hands. He leans back in Revelation, converting then and there to Christianity. In a touch typical of Lotto's empathetic humor, Longinus' magnificent white horse turns its head to catch our eye. Only one person among the thronging soldiers at the foot of the crosses seemed to share this awareness of being witnessed the soldier at the foot of the cross, close to the perspectival vanishing point of the painting. He is said to be a self-portrait of the artist, and while that is hard to confirm, he clearly plays an important role, acting as a stand-in for us to enter and immerse ourselves in the scene. There is a remarkable depth of feel to the composition. The man glances also at the group right in front of us, which seems almost about to spill over the edge into where we are. Central to it is Christ's mother, the Virgin Mary, swooning in sorrow. She is held up by St. John the Evangelist, clothed in moss green and bright red, as well as other companions, including a clearly distressed Mary Magdalene dressed in beautiful, airy blue. Their soft, pliable bodies are typical of Lotto, expressive of their emotional turmoil, intertwined and bound up with each other. Look at the interplay of hands right there in the front. Also characteristic is Lotto's animated, almost nervous rendering of their garments. They twist, flutter, and knot together in sync with their wearer's sorrow. Each of the figures wears different colors, all rendered with deep saturation. It is testament to Lotto's skill and confidence in his choices that the effect is not overwhelming, but rather serves to attract and engage us in what is clearly the emotional core of the altarpiece. John looks back to where an angel invites an older, kneeling man to participate. He's the painting's patron, Bishop Niccolo Bonafede, painted from the life. Bonafede had been charged by the Pope with renovating the church. He was put in touch with Lotto, who had had a long and reasonably successful career and remained at the time at the height of his powers, but he was struggling to find employment in his home city of Venice. Tastes there were changing in favor of more heroic approaches to storytelling and painting. Lotto's contemporary and colleague Titian was the city's dominant artist. Lotto therefore increasingly worked for patrons of the Marche, for whom he would paint many of his greatest works of his later years, including the stunningly complex, ambitious, and personal work. The magnificent tabernacle frame with its rich floral decorative scheme was carved for the picture, perhaps by Lotto's friend and collaborator, the architect Giovanni del Corvo from Ancona. 